title of this class is called Family First. Family First. And he thought about this title because, you know, we all come into, we come into the understanding of who we are. You know, the transition is, is to learn that we are actually, this is the true spiritual family that we have here. We must learn to let go of the loved ones that we've, that we've learned to love according to the world and accept our true nation, which is the nation of Israel. But first, let's, let's, let's backtrack a little bit. Let's go back and see how we've lost our way, right? Give me the book of, give me the book of Job. Start with Job, chapter 8, verse 8, read it. It's the book of Job, chapter 8 and verse 8. Go ahead. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age. All right, so the Bible is telling us to inquire of the former age. A lot of times we, with, uh, not a lot of times, our people in general are walking around. We're walking zombies. We are literally the lost sheep. We're going to prove that today. We don't know who we are. We don't know who our God is. We don't know what landmass we come from. And then hence the reason why we've become this degenerate nation that's walking around today. Read that again. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age. Right, so we must inquire of the former age and do what? And prepare thyself. And do what? And prepare thyself. We must prepare ourselves for what? To the search of their fathers. Right, for the most part, all of us growing up, even before we came into this truth here, we wondered, well, who were we before slavery? Who were the Africans that were put on the slave ships and docked here in America? Right? Who were we? Because all that we're told is that we are black, African-American. We're given different stigmas, right? Read that again. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age. Go ahead. And prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. Right. So our job is to prepare ourselves to the search of our forefathers. Not just one or two generations back. We must know who we come from. We must know who we are in order to get what is ordained for us. We will not know where we're going unless we know where we come from and where we're at today. Give me the book of Amos chapter 3. Let's get started. It's Amos the, chapter 3 verse 1. It's the book of Amos chapter 3 and verse 1. Go ahead. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you. He said, hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you. Read. O children of Israel. O who? O children of Israel. It didn't say Hispanics. It didn't say black. It didn't say African Americans. It said, O children of Israel. African American, black, Haitian, uh, Puerto Rican. Give me, give me another one. Um, Nicaraguan. None of those things are in the Bible. Hispanics are not in the Bible. Read that again. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you. O children of Israel, read against the whole family, against the whole family, read which I brought up from the land of Egypt. It says the whole family. Let me get that um definition of family. It says from the whole family which he brought up from the land of Egypt. Read that. Family, a group of one or more parents and their children living together as a unit. Mm -hmm. Give me some of the synonyms now on, at the end. Ancestry, go ahead. Ancestry. Go ahead. Parentage. Go ahead. Birth. Pedigree. 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 You know what I want. Give me the book of Numbers. The book of Numbers. What is our pedigree? Our pedigree determines our family. And how is our pedigree determined? We read earlier in Job, we must have a search of our fathers. Who are our fathers? Read that. Numbers chapter 1. Numbers chapter 1 verse 18. Go ahead. And they assembled all the congregation together uh -huh. on the first day of the second month, and they declared their pedigree. They declared their pedigree. They declared their bloodline. They declared their families. Read. After their family. After their what? After their family. By what? By the house of their fathers. By the house of their fathers. By the house of their fathers. Our people are lost today, and we refuse to, we really don't know how to go about searching for our fathers, who our fathers are. Right. That's why the Most High has ordained prophets today to come out and teach this Bible, to give this understanding to our nation. To give this. Go back to um, Amos now. You can drop that. Amos chapter three. Amos chapter three, verse one. Go ahead. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. Go ahead. 
against the whole family. Against the whole family, read. Which I brought up from the land of Egypt. Read. Saying, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Go ahead. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. He said, therefore, he will punish the Israelites for all of our iniquities. All of our iniquities. So what is that family? What is that family that he brought up out of Egypt? Get Exodus chapter 1. We're going to read verse 1 through 5. We're going to read verse 1 through 5. We're going to move kind of quick because we have articles and things that we want to go through. Exodus chapter 1, verse 1. Go ahead. Now these are the names of the children of Israel. So these are the names of the children of Israel, the descendants of a, a man named Israel, whose surname, well, whose name was prior to being called Israel was Jacob. These are the children of Israel. Read. Which came into Egypt. Which came into Egypt. Read. Every man and his household came with Jacob. Read. Reuben. Go ahead. Simeon, Levi, and Judah. Mm -hmm. Issachar, Zebulon, and Benjamin. Dan and Naphtali, Gad and Asher. Read. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob. It says all the souls that came out of our forefather Jacob. Read. Were 70 souls. And we were 70 souls in the land of Egypt. This is how we started. This is who we are. And we're going to prove that shortly. Read on. For Joseph was in Egypt Be already. Because Joseph was already in Egypt. Right? So go back. Read Amos chapter 3. Now read verse 2 again. Read verse 2 again. Amo, Amos, chapter 3, verse 2. Go ahead. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Right, so the Most High is saying, you only, you Israelites are the only family that I've known. Read. Only families that I've known of the earth. Go ahead. And therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. It says, therefore, he will punish us. He will punish the Israelites for all their iniquity. So who are the Israelites today? And what is that punishment that the Most High is referring to here in, in, um, in Amos? Give me the book of Deuteronomy. You know what I want. Chapter 28, verse 15. We must go through this. We must go through these curses. We mu our people must be able to identify themselves. This is how we know who we are according to the Bible. Right, so a lot of times we may look at Deuteronomy 28, especially if we've been walking this walk for a long time, and we may see it as a basic precept, is, is something that, you know, is minuscule, we want to learn the deep things. But this thing right here is what leads us back to our repentance, and which, once we repent, this is what's going to lead us to the kingdom of heaven, which is ordained for the Israelites as long as we believe that thing and follow the Most High God's laws in the faith of Jesus Christ. So read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Go ahead. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, mm -hmm. to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses Go ahead. shall come upon thee and overtake thee. He said, all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Give me verse 37. No, give me verse 64 first. Give me verse 64. Verse 64, mm -hmm. and the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. So one of the curses is that the Israelites will be scattered among all people across the four corners of the earth. Will be scattered, scattered in slavery, scattered in captivity. Read. From the one end of the earth. Go ahead. Even unto the other. Go ahead. And there. And in these lands, what are we going to do? Thou shalt serve other gods. Mm -hmm which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Right, so in these lands where we're scattered, we're going to serve other gods, which none of our forefathers have known, even wood and stone. Right, and those are your different, those are your different um, religions. Christianity predominantly and Islam. Right, and in those religions, we're going to lose our way. We're going to lose our nationality. Give me verse 37. Verse 37, mm -hmm. and thou shalt become an astonishment. Go ahead. So now we become an astonishment. When and you look at the so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans, or when you look at the nation of Israel, you're looking in astonishment, looking at how lost we are, looking at how degenerate we are, and how far we have fallen from any form of morals and values as a nation of people. Any form of morals and value, we've fallen from those things. Read on. A proverb. A what? A proverb. A proverb is a wise saying. 
A wise saying meaning if you want to hide anything from a black man, put it in a book. Right? What do you call a Puerto Rican with a three-piece suit on? May the defendant please rise. Right? Blacks love chicken and watermelon. All these different things are proverbs. And read on. And a byword. And a byword, meaning we'll be called something outside of our original name. Read on. Among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. Give me the um the first video with um Shannon Sharp. Because we're going to show you. No, matter of fact, give me the article first. Give me the article. Let's go through this article real quick. A proverb and a byword. We're going to show you the confusion amongst our community in regards to what our nationality is and who we are as a nation. And you let us know, you let me know, or let us know who this is referring to. Okay, put the article up. A debate over identity and race acts. Are African Americans black or black? Right, are African Americans black or black? Some of the proverbs that we've had, Negro, Afro-American, African American, there's even confusion within the term black. You have the uppercase black and the lowercase black. That lets you know who the Proverbs and who, who are the nation of people that's going to discontinue from their heritage, who they are today. All right, you can scroll up. You can read the beginning. It starts, it's the difference. It's the difference between black and black. Right, it's the difference between lowercase black and uppercase and capitalized black. Read. A long time push by African American scholars and writers to capitalize the word black in the context of race has gained widespread acceptance in recent weeks and unleashed a deep debate over identity, race, and power. Why would you have to debate over identity, race, and power if you already know who you are? The, the so called the Caucasian man is not debating over who they are. The Chinese man doesn't debate on who they are. Why is there a debate amongst the, the so-called blacks, the so-called African-Americans, the so-called uppercase blacks and lowercase blacks? Why is there a debate? Because we are cursed. That is some of the curses. Read, get that article. Keep reading. Hundreds of news organizations over the past month have changed their style to black in reference to the, to the race of people. To the capitalized black. Go ahead including the Associated Press, long considered an influential arbiter or of journalism style. Go ahead. Far more than a typographical change. The move is part of a gener a part of a generation's old struggle Go ahead. over how the best how best to refer to those who trace their ancestry to Africa. How best to refer to those, meaning us, who trace their ancestry to Africa. This, these debates have been going on since um, the um, emancipation is what, we've, what, what we found out. These debates were going on since the early 1900s and the late 1800s, right? The term African-American or Afro-American is not a new term either. It's what we found out, right? But read on. The capitalization of black, Go ahead. which has been pushed for years, strikes at deeper questions over the treatment of people of Amer African descent. Right, so it says the capitalization of black strikes deeper questions over the treatment of people of African descent. Read on. Who were stripped Who of were what? Who were stripped of their identity. Stop right there. We just go back to Deuteronomy 28. Hold that article. Hold that article. Read 28, verse 37. Who were stripped. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 37. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt become an astonishment, Go ahead. a proverb, and a byword. And a byword. The Most High God said we're going to go into slavery and lose our nationality. We are not going to know who we are as a nation of people. Read. Among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. It says among all nations. So while we're scattered among all nations across the globe, we are known as those lost ones that don't know who we are. We are given bywords. Yeah, you can put those up. We are given bywords in Proverbs. We are the byproducts of this oppression here. We are the byproducts of slavery. Right? For, for so-called black people now to hear this gospel and not identify themselves with what's coming out, with, with what, what the Most High is saying in his word is, is astounding. It's astonishing. 
to see that we're debating over capitalized black or lowercase black. Go back to the article. Started the capitaliza capitalization of black again. The capitalization of black, mm -hmm. which has been pushed for years, strikes at deeper questions over the treatment of people of African descent. Right, because the people of African descent that's scattered across the globe have been oppressed, used, and abused, some would say. Read. Who were stripped of their identity. Who were stripped of their identities. Read. And enslaved in centuries past. Right, so this right here, when you read the Bible and you're reading what happened to the African, the, the people of African descent and how they were treated, that lets you know that we are the people of the book. But read on. And who struggles to become fully accepted as part of the American experience continue to this and day. And that is the problem. How people don't know that we are not supposed to want to become part of this American experience. We are the American, our part of the American experience is slavery is captivity. That is what we experience here in America, and that is what the Most High God has done to us. Give me verse Deuteronomy. Hold the article, but give me Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Let's see the American experience for the so-called black Hispanics and Native Americans, those that have lost their identity. Read. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. So now we shall serve our enemies. Read. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Which God has sent against us. Okay, you can put those pictures up as we go through. In hunger. In hunger. So if we want food, we have to serve our enemies. These are some of the things that have happened to the people of quote unquote African descent. Read on. And in thirst. When we need anything to drink. Read. And in nakedness. Go ahead. And in want of all things. Anything that we want. Even to know who we are as a nation of people. Who our God is. Where our homeland is, we have to get it from our enemies. Read that. Go ahead. And he. And that enemy is going to do what now? Shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Go ahead. Until he have destroyed Until thee. we have been completely destroyed as a nation of people. Destroyed. Destroyed. We have no knowledge of self. No knowledge of who our God is. No knowledge of how to conduct ourselves in marriage. Or in a community, as a family, as a nation of people. No knowledge of, of our nationality. No knowledge of our heritage. Go back to the article. I want you to jump to the part where it says the move toward black. Right there, the move toward black. The move toward black is not embraced by all African Americans. Right, so it lets you know that we're uh, completely confused. Because the move toward, some people don't want to identify to black. Right, the capitalized black, read. And two of the country's major news outlets, the New York Times mm -hmm. and the Washington Post. It says two of the country's major news outlets now. These are, the, these are the most influential news outlets in the world, let alone the country. Read. Are still wrestling over whether to make the change. They're still wrestling over whether to make the change? How can you change who you are? That makes no sense. Read on. Black is a color. This is Jesse Jackson. Now, go ahead. Said the Reverend Jesse Jackson. And he's right. Black, the capitalized black is a color. It's a noun. Read. The longtime civil rights leader who popularized the term African-American. But we're not African-American either, though, Jesse. Reverend Jackson. We're not African-American either, though. So he didn't want to be called a noun because he said black is a color. So call us African-American. Named after two so-called white men. Right? Read on. In an effort to highlight the cultural heritage of those with anc ancestral ties to Africa. Go ahead. We built the country through the African slave trade. Look at the destruction there. It says until you have been destroyed. Think about the destruction, this brother. And a lot of our brothers say that we built America. They don't even, they don't, so we're glorifying the fact that we were raped, robbed, and murdered, and beat, and put to death in order for this country to... We don't even consider that we are on the bottom. And they had their foots on our neck in order for this country to be built. That is a destroyed mind, a lost mind, to glorify the fact that we built this country. We didn't build this country willingly. We came over here with yokes of iron upon our necks, and this country was formed that way. Go back to the article. 
African American acknowledges that any term that emphasizes the color and not the heritage. Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Go back to black is a color. Got you. Go ahead. Black is a color. Go ahead. Said the Reverend Jesse Jackson, uh-huh. Jesse L. Jackson, the longtime civil rights leader who popularized the term African American mm-hmm. in an effort to highlight the cultural heritage of those with ancestral ties to Africa. Go ahead. We built the country through the African slave trade. Through the African slave trade. What nation of people are written of in the Bible that are going to go into slavery on slave ships and be brought across the four corners of earth, specifically here to, uh, to the Americas, and to build this nation and to serve our enemies? What nation of people is, is written of in the Bible? What nation of people is he talking about? Read the article. Keep reading. African-American acknowledges that. Mm-hmm. Acknowledges that we are slaves. No, the Bible acknowledges that the slaves here in America are not African-American, that we are the Israelites, according to the Bible, Jesse. Read on. Any term that emphasizes the color Mm -hmm. and not the heritage separates us from our heritage. It does what? Separates us from our heritage. That is a brother that has absolutely no understanding. What separated us from our heritage? You know what I want. Give me Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4. How are we separated from our heritage? We must come back to this Bible here and search for our forefathers. Because this is our leaders. This is one of the the big leaders in the African-American community, at least in the 80s and early 90s. Reverend Jesse Jackson, he walked with Martin Luther King. But it lets you know that the understanding just wasn't there at the time of who we are and the acceptance of that. If they're not accepting black or African-American or uppercase or lowercase black, they damn it. We, we already know that they're not accepting Israelite or the, from the tribe of Judah or Levi or Issachar. Read that. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4. Right, because Jesse Jackson said any term that emphasizes color and not the heritage separates us from our heritage. So he's saying that black is what separates us from our heritage. Jesse, African-American separates us as well. It means that we still don't know who we are. But how do we get separated from our heritage? Go ahead. And thou, even thyself, Go ahead. shall discontinue from thine heritage. It says we shall discontinue from our heritage. Read. That I gave thee. That the most high God has given us. We don't even know what our heritage is. Go ahead, you can put that up while we're going through it. As long as it matches the scripts, man, you got you got call Blanche. Go ahead. And I will cause thee uh-huh. to serve thine enemies. So Jesse. The African slave trade, as you call it, has been caused by us being discontinued from our heritage. Why? Read on. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies. To do what? To serve thine enemies. We just read that in the book of Deuteronomy. Read. In the land which thou knowest not. In the land that we did not know. Read on. For ye have kindled a fire. He says, because we have kindled a fire. Read. In mine anger. Go ahead. Which shall burn forever. Which shall burn forever. That's how we discontinued from our, from our heritage. Because we went against the covenant that we made with the Most High God, and we are now being punished. We read that in Amos. Therefore, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you, Israelites, nation, family. Go back to the article. Got a little bit more on that thing. Um, the next, the next paragraph underneath heritage. There, there are also concerns mm-hmm. that turning black into a proper noun lumps people of the African diaspora into a mo- a mono monolithic. A monolithic group and erases the diversity of their experience. So he's worried about the term black, or lowercase black. It erases the diversity of their experience, basically saying that we weren't all slaves, right? And some black people were free here in America and things of that nature. The diversity of our experiences. The only experience that we've had here is being oppressed. We shall only be oppressed and spoiled forevermore here in America. Regardless of the fact that we're talking about nationality and not knowing who we are shows that we have been oppressed. That's the only experience that the the people of African descent have experienced here in America. Read on. Some have said it bestows credibility upon upon a social 
construct, construct. Go ahead. created to oppress black people. Created to do what? Created to oppress black people. All of the different bywords were created to oppress black people. Read. Perhaps the most notable concern is what to do about white and brown as racial identifiers. Right, so now they're worried about white and brown as racial identifiers. Because if they if they if they call black people black as a color, then you have to call the white people white as a color, and that is a is symbolic to their superiority and their purity, right? So we don't want the color deal to, to happen here because black means evil and ugly and all those different things, right? Jump now in the um in the article where it says at a recent scroll down, yeah, right there. At a recent online meeting of race of race related. A cross desk team devoted to race coverage of the times. Mm -hmm. A discussion of whether to capitalize black or not made clear that there is not universal agreement. Go ahead. Even among African Americans on the staff. Right. So this was an article that was that they had posted um, in 1904. W. E. B. Du Bois and and a, and a few others, and they were debating over the different terms. Right. Um. Jump down to where it says the acceptable terms. We're going to skip through it for time. Go ahead. The acceptable terms in America for identifying black people have evolved over generations. It has changed over generations. We are the only nation of people whose nationality has changed over generations. This should wake our people up to let us know that we don't have our true nationality and the people that are being called these bywords are the Israelites according to the Bible, which is written in the book of Deuteronomy. It's amazing to me how our people don't see this thing, yet they're debating over their nationality and don't see that that's an issue. We got a video, though, but keep reading that. We're going to go to a video that shows that some of our people do see it's an issue. We sitting here that know who we are knows that it was an issue, hence the reason why we, we, we decided to search for our forefathers. And when we heard this word, the Holy Spirit started dealing with us to humble ourselves to the word, to really learn who we are so that we can be at least at peace and free our minds of those shackles that we've had, the destruction that they placed upon us. Go ahead, back to the article. Start from the top again. No, the acceptable terms, yeah. The acceptable terms in America for identifying black people have evolved over generations. Go ahead. From colored Go ahead. to Negro to black and, and African American. Go ahead. Also commonly used is people of color. So we've been called Negro, black? African-American, and also we've been called people as color as what? An umbrella term. As an umbrella term. As an umbrella term. Um, for time's sake, let's... All right, we, we, we made our point with the, with the article, right? Let's get a video. Let's give me the one with um, Shannon Sharp and the Ocho Cinco brother. They're discussing Cameron because the brother, the rapper Cameron stated that he doesn't want to identify himself as an African, right? Or an African man. It created a stir across across the so-called black community or the colored community, whatever you want to want to call it. Go ahead, you can play it. Cameron. Um, Turn it up some. He identifies as black, not African, not African American. Right. He said, "I rather." I'd rather feel in black than African American because mm. Africans don't even f with us. You go over there to Africa, they call us Yankees. They they f with us, but we're not from the motherland. Mm -hmm. We're from America, so I'd rather i rather say I'm Black American. Stop right there. You know Stop what, right what's there. That's funny. That's Stop right there. That's, that's the brother said he doesn't want to be called African Americans because Africans don't mess with us. He'd rather be called black though. He'd rather be called a color. It's all the same, brother. Can. But understand something, Africans don't mess with you. The hermetic Africans don't mess with you because we're not African. These are the same thoughts that I had coming up. Like, I was like, yo, I'm not African, man. These guys don't like us. You know, you come up in New York, they, they brothers selling you um, CDs, DVDs on the streets and things of that nature. You know, they, you can tell the way some of them, they look at you. You're like, yo, I was like, I never thought I was an African. You know what I mean? But you use the term African-American because, you're like, this is what was given to us in our destroyed mindset, right? So I can see where Cameron is coming from. But then the term black is even crazier because that's a color, right? So there's the confusion there. 
but go ahead, play the video. Let's say I'm black American. You, you know what was funny? That, that's 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 um. I mean, that's obviously Cam has his own personal choice on how he wants to feel about it. I think there's some truth into some of the things that he's saying about those that are in Africa really not appealing to us or or liking us, making jokes yeah. about us being Yanks. Um, for that Nate. I tell you, Shannon Sharp is like lack of a serious terms. coon, man. But go ahead. Go but ahead. Um, I, I get where he's going with it. I get where he's going, but it, I just, it doesn't really mean much when you think about it in hindsight. You know, if I got to go way over there for somebody to have an opinion of what I am, I, 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 I'm good, yeah. don't you? That, that's that's something I, I I just, and I I don't think I know enough to really get in depth about the conversation in general. You know, as far as my history goes, my ancestry, uh, we're all told that we are come from Africa. That, you know, and obviously there, there's a huge story behind it. I, I don't know enough about the story in general. And I, I don't want to sit here and say the wrong thing. You might be better suited to, to answer it and tell me your thoughts. Maybe know well, a little bit more about this topic than I do. Well, right, stop right there. Stop came. right there. So now Ocho is being honest. He's like, really? I don't know. Where I come from, basically, he's like, yo, I don't know where I come from. And the term doesn't mean much. It shouldn't mean much to the so-called black man. And he also admitted that he was given this nationality. All of our people know those things, and they don't see that being given a nationality is a sign of oppression. We don't see that? It doesn't mean much. But what does Israel mean? Give me Genesis chapter 32, verse 28. When we come back to who we are and start learning who we are, we know that our nationality means something. Our names mean something. It's important to know who we are and what we represent according to the Most High God. Read that, 32 and 28. Genesis chapter 32, verse 28. Go ahead. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob. Right, so he's talking to our forefather, Jacob. Read. But Israel. He said, your name is not going to be Jacob anymore. But Israel, read. For as a prince mm -hmm. hast thou power with God. As a prince thou hast thou power with God. Jacob means has power with God. You're a prince that has power with God. That means something. That's not a color. That doesn't derive from your oppressors, African and America. At the two so-called white men. Play the video. All originated from Africa. Right. So they said African. Africa Americans. Mm -hmm. So that's what you originated from because right. that's where you came from. And so you was an African on American soil. Right. So basically what Cam is saying, like, look, bro, we born here. So we should be black Americans because right. 55, 65, 75 percent of us didn't originate in Africa. Mm -hmm. Now maybe we have origins that started in Africa. Now you see the confusion. Mm -hmm. Pause it real quick. He's the Cameron is like, yo, I was born in America, so I'm American. Your bloodline is determined by the lineage. It doesn't matter what landmass you were born on, brothers and sisters. The landmass you're born on doesn't determine your nationality. We read that. Get numbers real quick again. The landmass that you're born on does not determine your nationality, brothers and sisters. Especially the landmass that you know that you were brought over here and your forefathers were brought over here in shackles and chains and forced to be here. You were given your names. You were given your the, the God for you to serve, and you were given several different nationalities. Right? So there's no way in the world that the landmass that you live on lets you know who you are. Read that again. This Numbers is, chapter 1, verse 18. Go ahead. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. Mm -hmm. And they declared their pedigrees go ahead. after their families. By the house of their father. That is a step that the so-called black man, we're dealing with black men right here on this video. So that's just, that's a step that the so-called black men have forgotten. You must know who your forefathers are to know where you are from and to know where, who you are as a nation. Your forefathers. Go back to the video. See it? But, and his problem, his argument is says, like, with white people, they, they don't say... European American, mm -hmm. right? They don't say this; they say Caucasian. Caucasian. <laughs> I have a I have a question. Since we we're on the topic of that, how far back do you think we would have to go in our lineage before we get to see where we are truly from? Mm. Now, now, it, you can stop even... it right there. 
because Ocho Cinco or Chad, I think that's his that's his um government name. Nah, he changed it to Ocho Cinco, I think. But he asked a question that many of us, if not all of us, have had. How far do we have to go to search for our fathers, right? Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Because this confusion is kind of crazy in our community. Give me Smokey Robinson now. Just dealing with the confusion that we have in the nation of people, then we're going to go back to Chad and answer Chad's question for him. Right? Because we need, our people need to understand who we are in order to learn how we must conduct ourselves. Let's get, let's get Smokey. Give me Smokey. This guy here. You have said that you resent the idea of being called an African-American. So that you are a black pause it. American. So now he resents, meaning he has a hatred. He does not like the fact that he's called African-American, the same as Cam. Go ahead. Okay. Yes. Explain. I think that when they call black people who were born and raised for generations in this country, if you accept the handle of African-American, that says that you don't accept being an American-American. Mm. You don't accept being born in Chicago or New York or Detroit or wherever you were born, for generations your family has been here, you know? Built this country too. Sweat and tears and all that, you know, fought in every war, okay? So this is my country here. Mm. So... <laughs> the Edomite, like, yo, this dude here is destroyed. I'm American, American. My people have died and done everything for this country. You see that? And when he says my people died and everything for this country, he's talking about for our slave masters, for our oppressors did. Read 2848 again. Our people need to see this that to show the confusion. And I'm specifically dealing with the so-called black men because we're the ones that are ordained by the most high to lead this nation here. So our black men need to learn who we are according to the Bible and learn where these answers come from. It's complete destruction to want to glorify to want to glorify the fact that you're an American, when in fact you're not an American. You're a denizen anyway, Smokey and Chad and and um Shannon Sharp and Cameron. We're not Americans. We are the slaves that came over here. We are the Israelites according to the Bible. Go ahead, read that again. Twenty-eight verse forty-eight. Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight verse forty-eight. Go ahead. Therefore. Shalt thou serve thine enemies? Go ahead. Which the Lord shall send against thee. So we were brought here to America to serve our enemies, to build America up for them, not for us. We built America for our enemies. We came here to serve our enemies because we went against the Most High God. It is a curse, according to the Most High. Read. In hunger. Go ahead. And in thirst. Go ahead. And in nakedness. And in want of all things. Read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. That is that blood, sweat, and tears that Smokey is referring to. It wasn't the industrial revolution where you, you wanted to work and you had to build this thing. No, you were forced. You were whipped. Our foreparents were beaten, put to death in order to serve our enemies to build this hellhole called America. That's what happened. Read on. Until... He have destroyed Until thee. we're completely confused as a nation of people. We cannot, and he understands that we cannot fight against them if we don't know who we are. Give me the book of Deuteronomy 32, verse 26. Because we read earlier that we were scattered, right? But there was a reason why we were scattered, and there was a, there was a, a divine plan that our enemies had. Deuteronomy 32, verse 26. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 26. Go ahead. I said... I will scatter them into corners. The most High like God said he's going to scatter the Israelites into corners. The so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Read. 
I will make the remembrance of them. He will make the what? The remembrance of them to cease from among men. He will make the remembrance of us to cease from among men. This is why our nationality has changed. This is why we're debating on whether to call ourselves lowercase black or uppercase black, Afro-American or African-American, colored, Negro, nigger, whatever, whatever the hell we want to um, associate ourselves with. That is confusion because our nationality has been, read that again. I said I would scatter them into corners. Go ahead. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. We would not know who we are. Give me the book of Daniel chapter 9 verse 7. Give me the book of Daniel 9 verse 7. What we're seeing amongst our leaders, our the elders in our community, or the people that's supposed to be our leaders, the people that are idolized by our young generation and by our children. These people are completely confused. Read that. Daniel chapter 9 verse 7. And our plight is written in the Bible. Go ahead. O Lord, Righteousness belongeth unto thee. Go ahead. But unto us, confusion of faces. But unto us, confusion of faces, to the point where the so-called black man wants to identify himself as a hermetic African, so-called black man wants to identify himself as a color, doesn't know who he is. It's not, it's not just the so-called black man, right? The Hispanics want to identify themselves as white or as Caucasians, as Edomites. They don't know who they are. None of us know. We're confused today. Read. As at this day. As at this day, read. To the men of Judah. Go ahead. And to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Read on. And unto all Israel. All of the Israelites are proverbs and bywords today. If you want to find out who the nation of Israel is on this earth today, find out the people who do not know who they are and that take on the nationality and the names and the practices and the customs and the heritage of their oppressors and their slave masters. That's who the Israelites are today. Read on. That are near. Go ahead. And that are far off. Through all the countries where the thou has driven them. Through all the countries where we were scattered. Read. Because of their trespass. Because of what? Because of their trespass. This is the answer to the questions that our nation of people need to understand. We've went against the Most High God and God has put this on us. The reason why we built America, so to speak, that our brothers and sisters are so happy to say we built this country is because the Most High God is punishing us. We are being cursed today. Read. That they have trespassed against thee. Go ahead. Give me Isaiah chapter 1, verse 3. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 3. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 3. Go ahead. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. Go ahead. But Israel. But the Israelites what? Doth not know. Go ahead. My people doth not consider. The Israelites are the nation, are the nation that the Most High God has chosen. We are God's chosen people. We are the people that are ordained to be set apart and to be to be special in the Most High God's eyes. We're going to get that a little bit later on. We are the nation that the Most High God knows. Go back to Amos chapter 3. Amos chapter 3, verse 1 and 2 again. Amos chapter 3, verse 1. You want to know who we are and your nationality is? Out of all those different articles and all the different answers we see out of our people, none of them say we are the princes that have power with the Most High God. None of them say that we're the Israelites according to the Bible. None of us. Yet the Bible here identifies who the Israelites are today. And it damn sure is not those Jewish people over there Across the across the country. And I mean, across the globe. It damn sure is not them. Read on. Amos chapter 3, verse 1. Go ahead. Hear this word that the Lord have spoken against you, O children of Israel. Go ahead. Against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt. Against the whole family which he brought up from the land of Egypt. We are a family. Especially those of us that have repented. We are the family. Those that want to do the will of the Most High God. Read. Saying, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Go ahead. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquity. And we're living through the punishments from the Most High God today. Right? Give me the book of Baruch. What's going to happen? Right? Start at verse 27. The reason why you see our elders, bishops, Deacons, 
captains, officers w- woken up today. The reason why our bishops were raised up, they were raised up by the spirit of the Most High God. He put the spirit on their elders to teach them. They took that spirit and ran with it, and they added on as the roses, be- as the water kept, continued to rise. They took that spirit to the point where we are today. Read that. Baruch chapter 2, verse 27. It's the book of Baruch, chapter 2, verse 27. Mm-hmm. O Lord our God, mm-hmm. thou hast dealt with us after all thy goodness. He has dealt with us after all thy goodness. Watch what Baruch is saying now. What is the goodness that he's talking about? Read. And according to all that great mercy of thine. Because the most I could have destroyed us completely. Read. As thou spakest by the servant Moses in the day when thou didst command him to write thy law before the children of Israel. What did he say to Moses? Read. Saying, if ye will not hear my voice. We just read that. Read. Surely this very great multitude shall be turned into a small number among the nations. Go ahead. Where I will scatter them. So Baruch. When he wrote this thing, he always referenced all of our, when you read the book of Daniel, when you read the book of Jeremiah, when you read, they always reference what the Most High God has done to us in the book of Moses, meaning the book of Deuteronomy, Leviticus, Numbers, and that he's brought those things upon us. And that's what you're seeing us do today. Read. For I knew that they would not hear me. Because he knew that we were stiff-necked and rebellious people. Read. Because it is a stiff-necked people. Go ahead. But in the land of their captives. But the Most High understood. Excuse me, their captivities. In the land of our captivities where we're being oppressed, raped, robbed, murdered, discontinued from our heritage, called proverbs and bywords, scattered, forced to serve other gods, completely destroyed where we don't know who we are and want to accept those bywords. Read. They shall remember themselves. They shall do what? They shall remember we sh- themselves. We shall remember who we are as a nation of people, who we are as a family on this earth today. We're going to remember who we are. So, yes, these curses are a great evil. It's a bad thing, right? It's not a good thing to be going through these curses. We're going through hell today. That's one of the definitions of hell is being in captivity. But guess what? Understanding what we're going through and why we're going through it and the fact that we're able to read who we are now in the scriptures is a good thing. Understand that we're coming back to our heritage based on the teachings that are coming out by the prophets that the Most High God has ordained to be raised back up. You can put that up. Give me Jeremiah 3, verse 15. Put that up while you, um, while you read the script. We're watching the phenomenon that Willie Lynch, talk, Willie Lynch talked about. We're seeing how our people are going to come out of the confusion of face and back into the fold as the nation, as the family of Israel. Read that thing. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15. Go ahead. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart. Go ahead. Which shall feed you the knowledge and understanding. Which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. The knowledge of who you are. The knowledge of who your God is. The knowledge of what you are supposed to do in these last days in order to repent and start serving your God. With joyfulness and gladness of heart. Read. And it shall come to pass. And that's it. That's it. Read that again. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart. Uh huh. Which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Right. Feed you with knowledge and understanding. Get the knowledge. Get the knowledge. We're not going to skip over that. Let the people know what the knowledge is. What are these pastors that have been raised up today that are across the four corners of, of the earth? What are they going to feed the people with? Read. Malachi chapter 2 verse 7. Go ahead. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. Go ahead. And they shall seek the law at his mouth. The laws of the most high God is the knowledge that our people are missing today. These laws is what's going to bring us back. These laws is our heritage. These laws identifies us with who we are as a nation of people. That is what these the pastors that the most high has raised up is going to bring back to us. Give me Romans chapter... Um, Give me Romans chapter 9, verse 1. No, give me Romans chapter 8, verse 16. I'm sorry. 8, verse 16. I'm going to call it before the horse. Romans chapter 8, verse 16. Go ahead. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit Uh that we are the children of God. So while these pastors go out into the highways and the hedges across the four corners of the earth in every country across the globe that's possible, 
they're spreading the spirit of the most high God out there in his land here. And those that, that, that are of the fold are going to bear witness with the spirit that is being brought out to know that we are not black, we are not African-Americans, that we are the children of God. Read that again. Put that up, put that up, man. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit. Go ahead. That we are the children of God. Right, so when our people see these things and when they hear these teachings, yes, they're going to be scorners. They're going to be scoffers. Everybody's not going to get it of the nation of Israel. We understand that, but that spirit that's going out is going to show those that are of the sheep. Christ said, my sheep hear my voice. They're going to hear that spirit and be like, oh, the same, like Ocho Cinco, those, all those questions are being answered now based on the spirit. Give me the spirit, John 6 and 63. Based on the spirit that is being spread across the four corners of the earth. That's how we're going to wake up to who we are. Read that. John chapter 6, verse 63. Go ahead. It is the spirit that quickens. Go ahead. The flesh profit of nothing. The words that I speak unto you. Go ahead. They are spirit and they are life. The words that are written in this Bible, the words that Christ spoke through his, pop, through his prophets and himself are the words that are spirit and that is the life. You understand that? But everybody, we, we mentioned that everybody's not going to get it, right? Everybody's not going to hear it. Hence the reason why we have our worldly family. A lot of us, a lot of us don't have any family members or quote unquote, you know, fleshly family members in this truth here. There's a reason behind that. Give me Jeremiah chapter three. There's a reason behind that. Once we come to the true understanding of what family is, what a nation is, right? Then we'll transform our minds to start accepting what the most high has set up for us. Read that. Jeremiah 3, Jeremiah 3 and 14. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 14. Go ahead. Turn, O backsliding children, mm -hmm. saith the Lord, for I am married unto you. So Christ is saying, repent, O black, O back, yeah, black is right, O backsliding children, because I am married unto you. Read. And I will take you one of a city. He said he's going to take one of a city. So don't think it's strange that you live in, uh, what, any, um, Calhoun County, and you're the only person in your county that knows. He said he's going to do what again? He's going to take one of a what? And I will take you one of a city. Go ahead. And two of a family. And two of a family read. And I will bring you to Zion. Right, so everybody's not going to hear this thing. Everybody's not going to hear it. Give me Romans chapter 9 now. Romans chapter 9, verse 1. Everybody in our family, our mother, our fathers, our cousins, our best friends in the world, everybody's not ordained to hear this word. All we can do is be an example to our worldly family and start accept accepting the family that the Most High God has given us. Come back to our nation, which is the family that's the most important at this time in our repentance. Read that. Romans chapter 9, verse 1. Go ahead. I say the truth in Christ. Mm -hmm. I lie not. My, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. That I have great heaviness uh -huh. and continual sorrow in my heart. Read. For I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ. Go ahead. For my brethren. For my brethren, read. My kinsmen. My family, my kinsmen, read. According to the flesh. According to the flesh. So this is a flesh walk. The Most High is looking for a nation of people that comes in the flesh from the bloodline of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's the lineage right there. There is no spiritual Israel, though it's a spiritual walk, right? But he's looking for that bloodline from our forefathers once we learn who they are. Read. Who are Israelites? Who are Israelites, not African American. Read. To whom pertain of the adoption. Because the Israelites pertain the adoption. Read. And the glory. And all of the glory that is written of in this Bible. Read. And the covenants. And the covenants that the Most High God made with our forefathers. That belongs to Israel and Israel only. As the only nation. Read. And the giving of the law. And the giving of the laws that we have as a heritage that our new pastors that are going out into those highways and hedges are teaching. Read. And the service of God. And the service of God. Read on. And the promises. Read. Who are the fathers. Uh-huh. And of whom is concerning the flesh. And of whom concerning the flesh. Read. 
Christ came. Jesus Christ came for those Israelites according to the flesh. It's not spiritual. Read. Who is over all? God blessed forever. Amen. Right. And read verse 6 now. Verse 6. Not as though the word of God had taken none effect. But not as though the word of God has taken none effect, though, brothers and sisters. Jeremiah said he's going to take one of a family, two of a city, and that, that's what's going to happen. Read. For they, for they are not all Israel. He says, for they are not all Israel. Read. Which are of Israel. That means all of us are not going to accept this word. All of us are not going to repent, brothers and sisters. We cannot worry about those things. What you're going to find out is your repentance is going to lead to them and your family members that don't want to hear this word, that are confused like the brothers that we saw in those videos, they're going to turn against you. They're going to speak evil of you. They're going to wait for you to fall. Yes, your mother. Yes, your father that you love. Yes, your grandma. You understand? And we go out in the streets and teach, and we, we go at these sisters wearing pants and things of that nature. I was speaking to an officer the other day. It was like, yo, we, 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 we like to be nice to our parents, though. Not understanding that, that that sister that's wearing pants right now, walking around with a baby daddy, that's somebody's mother. That could be your mother that is walking around in whatever city you live in, and she see those prophets, and guess what? They're, they're rebuking the hell out of her. But you're scared to rebuke. You don't want to rebuke her. You, you want to have hope for her. Yet she's the most rebellious person on the planet towards you. Give me that in Peter's. 1 Peter's 4, verse 3. We got to be mindful of who our family are today, who our family is, what nation of people we really come from, and what we've signed up for. Read. First Peter chapter 4, verse 3. Go ahead. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. Go ahead, because we, we all have lived in the will of the Gentiles. Not all of us. All praise to the Most High now that this truth has been going on for 20 plus years. To the fact where some children are actually born in this truth now, born and raised. That's 10, right. 15, 16 years old, where they didn't live to wrought the will of the Gentiles. That generation right there is special. But for us here that, that came in here at the age in our 30s or 20s or 40s or 50s, we did this thing. Read that again. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. So we've wrought the will of the Gentiles. Go ahead. When we walk in lasciviousness. Because we've walked in lasciviousness. Read. Lust. Go ahead. Excess of wine. Go ahead. Reveling. Uh. Banquetings. And abominable idolatries. And abominable idolatries. All of us were involved in those things. Whether we stepped foot in the Christian church or we didn't. If we didn't step foot in that Christian church all our life, guess what? We celebrated Christmas. We was out there on them streets gang banging with a, with a Jesus piece around our neck. That's the, most, that's the biggest oxymoron on the planet. How you a gangbanger and a drug dealer, dope boy, you kill people, you push death, and you got a damn cross around your neck. Go ahead, man. But no, you know what? It's evil anyway, so that's what that cross represents. So it, it has nothing to do with the Most High God and these laws, statutes, and commandments in this Bible, so I guess they're doing what they're supposed to do. Read on. Wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them. Now this is what happens. When you find out who you are, you're no longer confused anymore. You're changing your life now, right? You don't want to fornicate anymore. You stop smoking weed. You stop going to the club on Friday nights and Saturdays, Thursday nights. You stop getting drunk out of your mind. You stop doing all those abominable things that everyone knows is not right and not good. They know it. Look, our people, our people have a conscience. They know damn well it is not right to be sitting around sleeping around with every Tom, Dick, and Harry and just having babies. Or well, maybe they don't. It's something called reprobate as well. Read. Read that again. For, Wherein, verse 4. Yes, sir. Wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot. And what are they going to be doing? Speaking evil of you. Your family members are speaking evil of you behind your back. Especially if they're the ones where you bring this truth to and they, and they, they don't want to hear it at all. They don't want to hear it at all. You know, my parents used to get upset. They kicked me and my cousin out. When my cousin wanted to learn more before, you know, before my parents passed and stuff. My cousin wanted to learn more. We talking, we talking, we talking, going over laws, trying to build them up. My mom got pissed. She was like, yo, y'all stop it right now. 
Get out. I don't want to hear that, that S no more. Like, damn you, the devil. That <laughs> Bible speaks something. This is my mama. You know what I mean? I love her to death. But, yo, she got pissed. My cousin looked at me. We just started laughing. You know, like, all right, man, you got it. You got it. I'm out anyway. You know what I mean? So we got to be mindful, man. Give me the book of Luke, chapter, 20, chapter 12, verse 51. Luke chapter 12. You're going to get through it. Verse 51. It's the book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 51. Freedom. Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth. Go ahead. Do you suppose that Christ has come to give us peace on earth? Read. I tell you, nay, but rather division. But rather division. Where is that division going to come from? We must know what we signed up for, brothers and sisters. We all were confused. But the spirit bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So now we must take heed to what is written in these scriptures here. In regards to how we walk. And this just follow. It says man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. We got to humble ourselves down to that understanding. Read. What is for, the division that he's going to cause? Go ahead. For from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided. There shall be five in one house divided. Read. Three against two. It's going to be three against two. And two against three. Go ahead. The father shall be divided against the, the son. The father's going to believe something different from the son. Go ahead. And the son against the father. Christ is going to cause all this stuff in the household. Read. The mother against the daughter. Go ahead. And the daughter against the mother. The mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law. Go ahead. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. That's what we signed up for. I get it. You know, when we first come through these doors, we, we knew in this truth, all of us want our family to repent. All of us do. Some of us sit down for hours. I, I used to talk to my little brother for hours about this truth. He's more worried about damn conspiracy theories. Last conversation I had with him before he passed was, yo, bro, come on, man. He started, he started getting it a little bit, started getting happy. I was like, bro, man, there's a school down there in Florida, in Jacksonville, bro. You need to go there. You know what I'm telling him? You need to go there, man, and, and check it out, bro. And the brother said, yo, I'm not ready. That was his last words to me because about a month later, well, probably, yeah, I, didn't, I don't think I spoke, spoke to him afterwards. Right after that, like months, one or two months later, the brother died, passed away, forsaken this thing, talking about he's not ready. You got to be careful what we're doing, right? You got to be mindful. And understand that all of our family is not going to accept this thing. The thing is heavy, bro. The thing is heavy. Give me um, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. I want you to read through 18. Dealing with coming back to our family, who our real family is today. Go ahead. It's the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Because what we must understand, if you're walking in this truth that you want to keep these laws, statutes, and commandments, you must separate yourself from your family. Not saying disown them, right? But be that example letting them know that you're not going to compromise the word of God and what you believe in order for them to be happy and for them to accept you. That separation is what it's talking about. It doesn't mean you don't care about your mother, you don't love your family anymore. It doesn't mean you cut them off completely unless you have to. But what it does mean is that you have to learn to separate yourself from them and start following your family here in Christ and being amongst them. Read, read that. Go through this kind of quick. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. The Bible telling us not to be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Read. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? It, it, there is no fellowship. You can't have a Christian and an Israelite in the house together. Because on the Sabbath day, you're going to be cooking. The Christian's going to be cooking, eating shrimp, crab, pork, and lobster. While the Israel is going to be pissed. The Israelite, the true Israelite is going to be pissed. Hey, turn that stove off. Stop eating that ham. Stop doing all that foolishness. You can't dwell. You cannot make that mesh read. And what communion have light with darkness? What communion has light with darkness? Read on. And what concord have Christ with Belial? What concord has the true understanding of Christ with the devil? It's complete opposites, the lives that we live, compared to the lives that our family members live. When we read the scriptures, complete opposite lifestyle. There is no communion. Read. Or what part hath he that believeth uh -huh. with an infidel? What part is he that believeth with an unbeliever? Read. 
And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? Christianity, Christmas, New Year's, Easter, all these different things. We are the temple of God. What, what, what communion do we have with idols? Read. For ye are the temple of the living God. And he's God. explaining to you that we are the temple of the living God. So we should not be in idolatry and being in those environments or having communion with those that do those things. Read. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. Uh-huh. And I will bear their God. No, Excuse read, me. Right. And I will be their God. He said, I will be their God. Read. And they shall be my people. And they, those believers, shall be my people. Those believers shall be my people. Read on. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate. It's telling you come out from among them and be ye separate. We use that dealing with the other nations, but that's also talking about our unbelieving infidel family members. Come out from among them and be ye separate. Read. Sayeth the Lord. Go ahead. And touch not the unclean thing. Don't deal with their, their Easter dinners, their Christmas dinners, their, their birthdays, their whatever they're doing. Breaking the Sabbath days, their family cookouts. Don't do those things. Read. And I will receive you. And then the Most High God is going to receive us. Read. And will be a father unto you. And will be a father unto us. Read on. And ye shall be my sons and daughters. Sons and daughters are part of a family. Brothers and sisters, fathers, all those terms are part of families. And we shall be his sons and his daughters. Read. Sayeth the Lord Almighty. Give me Proverbs 12, verse 26. We cannot be unequally yoked with them. Because the more we're around them, this is what's going to happen. Read that. Proverbs 12, verse 26. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 26. This is why the Most High God tells us not to do those things. We've witnessed in... When you walk in this thing for a certain amount of time, you start witnessing and, and seeing what happens when people rather be amongst their family members. When they go through a little trial, whether it's in a marriage or within a congregation, and instead of turning to the leadership that is set up as to spiritually guide them as a father or as a brother or as an elder sister, they go against that and they turn to their mothers and their fathers, and their cousins in the world. We've seen what happened to that. I'm going to show you that. Read that. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. Go ahead. But the way of the wicked seduces them. But the ways of the wicked seduces them. They're not going to correct you and tell you, hey, sis, you're wrong. You need to go back to your husband. Your mother's not going to tell you that. Because you got an issue with following your husband's orders or whatever's going on, or your father's or your mother's orders. So you go to your grandma and things of that nature when the Bible tells you that you're in subjection to your parents or you're in subjection to your husband. But what is your mother going to tell you? Nah, that's, that's crazy. That thing is in a cult, girl. Marriage is 50 50, and he don't need to be ruling over you like he got you like a little slave out there. Now, nah, come on here with me, baby. Turning you against the Bible. The ways of the wicked does what? Seduce them. Exactly. Give me Sirach chapter 27, verse 12. We're going to get through this. Sirach 27, verse 12. These are scriptures that we all hear when we first walk through these doors. But unfortunately, unfortunately, you have brothers and sisters that, are, that, that be with us for years and years. And we, we, I'm going to say we. Now, all of us are not really struggling with that aspect. Some of us, you know, we get rid of it. But not to exclude brothers and sisters from this thing, we all, we, some of us still struggle with these things. Some of us still rather seek guidance and counsel from our worldly family. Some of us have not created relationships with the brothers and sisters that come here that believe. And the, per, the person that they speak to the most are the people in the world, their family in the world. They don't want to let them go. They don't want to let go of that wicked wife, that wicked husband, those, that wicked grown ass 25 year old son that's living in the house. They, want, they don't want to let go of that. So they trim their ways. Read that thing. Sirach chapter 27, verse 37. 12. Yeah, 27, 12. Go ahead. If thou be amongst the indiscreet, go ahead. Observe the time. So when you have to be around them, if your mother, if you want to do something, your, your parents, they raised you, so they nurtured you. And as long as they're not in treating you evil, Yes, you got to separate yourself, and now you have a new family. But still, if they need you, guess what? It's Wednesday. Uh, man, I need to go to the store. I just got out the hospital and things of that nature. Take care of your mother. Be there for her. 
You never know. You know those actions, those, that charity that you show to that unbelieving parent, that might make them think twice about this truth here. That may show them, look, well, he's not in the cult. My son loves me. My daughter loves me. He's just doing that thing right now. Maybe I want to learn more later. You never, your actions may show that. But if you trim your ways to seek their love, they're never going to learn what this truth is all about. They're never going to learn that thing. Read that again. If thou be among the indiscreet, Go ahead. observe the time. Read. But be continually among men of understanding. Our duty, we should be continually among men of understanding. If your communion, if you're communing more with the, bro the people at work and with your family members, and we bet and you're barely seen at any school anywhere, you gotta examine yourself. The ways of the wicked seduce you. You you gotta change. You gotta fix that thing. Give me Sirach 37, verse 12 now. Got 10 minutes. Let's go. Wanna get we almost done. Sirach chapter 37, verse 12. Go ahead. But be continually with a godly man. If the Bible is telling us to be continually with a godly man, read. Whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. Who you know to keep the commandments. So you know that you got the devil on you when you know damn well at the Sabbath day you got brothers and sisters that have the Most High God's laws in their mind. That's why they're coming together and you want to stay home. You'd rather be at your mama house. You know she's not keeping the laws of God. They're not doing nothing that's written. And you know that the people that are coming together though, they're the ones that want to keep these laws. Because we're doing what's written, and you don't want to be amongst them. That's the devil, and you got to examine yourself and repent. Read that again. But be continually with a godly man. Go ahead. Whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. Read. It's a, it's a reason behind it now. Read. Whose mind is according to thy mind. Whose mind is, is supposed to be according to your mind. Your mind is supposed to be after the commandments of the Lord as well. Read. And will sorrow with thee if thou shalt miscarry. If you And will sorrow with you if you shalt miscarry. Give me the definition of miscarry. Because you may not understand what that means. And will sorrow with you. Will help build you up if you miscarry. Read that. Um, the second one. Miscarry of something planned. Go ahead. Fail to, fail to attain an attendant or ex expected outcome. Right. And, and if you fall in this truth here. Something planned. When we come into this world, we plan on walking a straight line and keeping the Most High God's laws, statutes, and commandments. But you fail at that thing. You fall. It says a just man falls seven times, but he gets back up. It says two are better than one because when one falleth, his brother is there to help him up. That's why it says be continually with a godly man in case you miscarry. In case you miscarry. Give me Luke chapter 14. So who was our family? Luke 14, verse 28 through 30. A couple more, a few more. Go ahead. Luke chapter 14, verse 28 through 30. So we are coming back to our nationality, right? Identifying ourselves as the Israelites, reading by, by dealing with what's been taught to us and reading for ourselves and studying for ourselves. It comes the understanding that we have a new family now. And that we are a different people and that we must follow the nation of Israel now. That are of Israel. Read that. This is the book of Luke chapter 14, verse 18. Luke 14, verse 28. Excuse me. This is the book of Luke chapter 14, verse 28. Oh, yeah, this one. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead read that. For which of you, intending to build a tower, go ahead. sit of not down first and count of the cost. Right, so we must count the cost in this thing. Because it says if you're with a godly man, when you miscarry, he's going to be there to sorrow with you. He's going to build you back up. He's going to bear your burdens with you. Right? Read on. Whether he have sufficient to finish it. Go ahead. Less happily, after he have laid the foundation. Go ahead. And is not able to finish if you're it. Not, if you're not with a godly man and you lay the foundation and you're not able to finish it, what happens? All that behold it begin to mock you. All him. that watch you now begin to mock you. That's your family members. You may even be mocked by some of us here in the truth because you started this thing and you was fake with us, right? But all they are beginning to mock you. Your family members are waiting for you to fall out of this thing. They don't want you to receive the kingdom of the most high God. They don't want you to receive that. They want you to say that you were, I remember when you was that Israelite, you was following them Israelites, but now you're right back here with us. You ready for Christmas? 
4th of July is coming up. Mother's Day is coming up. It's good to have you back, son or daughter. Read. Saying, this man began to build Go ahead. and was not able to finish. You're being mocked saying that you began to build and did not finish. Give me Romans 12, verse 10. Romans 12, verse 10. It's the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 10. Go ahead. Be kindly affectionate one to another uh -huh. with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. We must learn to prefer one another. Come out of our comfort zones. We must separate ourselves from the family members of the world, the friends of the world that do not want to see us prosper in this truth here. We must be continually with godly brothers and sisters. Right, we must do those things. Give me Sirach chapter 4, verse 10. Because we are a family. Matter of fact, no, give me Matthew chapter 12, verse 46 through 50. Rapid fire, rapid fire. Matthew 12, verse 46 through 50. It's the book of Matthew chapter 12, verse 46. So who was our family today? Read. While he yet talked to the people, uh -huh. behold, his mother and his brethren stood without. Uh -huh. Desiring to speak with so him. So Christ's mother and his brethren stood without. They wanted to speak to him. They were standing out. Go ahead. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brother stand without. He said, Your mother and your brother stand without. They want to speak with you. Go ahead. Desiring to speak with thee. Go ahead. But he answered and said unto him. Watch what Christ said. Read. That told him, Who is my mother and who are my brethren? says, Who is my mother and who is my brethren? Read. And he stretched forth his hands. He stretched forth his hands. Now read. Toward his disciples and said. Towards his disciples, towards his students, those that desired to follow him and that believed in his teachings. Read. Behold, my mother and my brethren. He said, behold, my mother and my brethren. Read. For whosoever shall do the will of my father. He says, whosoever shall do the will of my father. Read. Which is in heaven. Go ahead. The same is my brother and sister and mother. He says, the same is my brother and sister and mother. The will of the Father is Psalms 40, verse 8. I'm going to read that real quick for you. Stay right there, reader. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Those that want to go after the Most High God's law, statutes, and commandments, those are the ones that, that want to do the Christ's will. These are our family members today. That is our mother. That is our father. Right, we have to we have to transform our minds to understand that thing. We have no other family but those that want to keep these laws, statutes, and commandments. Anything else, anybody else does not want this thing to prosper. They do they are the enemies of you until they repent. If they repent, we must come to grips with that thing. Give me um uh give me Sirach chapter four, verse ten. This is our role as a nation of people. We're brothers, sisters, fathers. Sons, daughters, we have sons and daughters, those things. Read that. Sirach, chapter 4, verse 10. It's a mindset that we have to have. Go ahead. Be as a father unto the fatherless. Go ahead. And instead of an husband, unto their mother. So it says we have to be as a father unto the fatherless. A lot of our sisters come in here as single parents. Some of our brothers are single parents. Had to, had to do away with the wife, the wicked wife. So now they have the children. Our sisters have are single mothers. So when they come in here, the, these children need that thing. These children need to have that example, need to have an a, a elder sister to call them auntie, or some of them call them mama. They need them, them young men need men that they can look up to and be able to rely upon when they come. That's why the Young Prophets program is big. That's why the Young Daughters of Sarah is a big program. Everybody doesn't have both parents, but you have a plethora of, of parents here that's going to guide you as a parent in the spirit. You have a plethora of brothers and sisters. If your brother in the world is not going to exhort you to keep pushing in this truth, you got brothers and sisters around you that's going to exhort you to do these things, thus saith the Lord. That's what we have. Be as a father to the father and not as a husband unto the mother. Give me 1 Timothy 5, verse 1 and 2. Two more minutes. Go ahead. It's the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 5, verse 1. Go ahead. Rebuke not an elder. Uh-huh. But entreat him as a father. Uh-huh. And the younger men as brethren. Go ahead. The elder women as mothers. The younger as sisters. Go ahead. With all purity. With all purity. So it says rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father. That doesn't mean you can't correct, correct your elder. It just means that you're not going to correct him as your father. 
You, I mean, you're going to be in the spirit of that. You're not going to be like, hey, blasting off. No, you're going to have respect. You're going to have reverence to your elder. He's still your brother, but he's your elder. So you deal with them with that respect because they're the ones that's teaching us and guiding us through this gospel. They're the ones that's going to pick us up when we fall down. They're the ones that's going to correct us as we come back together as that nation of people that was set to be above all people on the face of the earth. This is what our elders, this is the exhortation that our elders give us. Deuteronomy 7 and 6, I'm not going to read it. Let's let our elders read that thing. Give me that video right there and we'll end it with that. Let's let our elders read that. This thing here, watch this thing, the thing, you know, it, it did something to me. Go ahead. <laughs> You think you nothing, you always gonna be nothing. You gotta come a change. That's why Samuel was sent to Saul. Deuteronomy. That's why we are sent to our people. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Look what God said. Deuteronomy 7 verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Do y'all believe that? Yes. Yes. You heard that? See, nobody even hear you. Do y'all believe that? Yes. Hmm. Hmm. Wait a minute. I want y'all to repeat this after me. For thou art in holy people. For thou art holy people. Unto the Lord thy God. Unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God. The Lord thy God. Have chosen thee. Have chosen thee. To be a special people. To be a special people. Unto himself. Unto himself. Above all people. 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 And upon the face of the earth. upon the face of the earth. Y'all better believe that. We must believe that. That's right. That's right. Now you're the wolf up now. <laughs> Elisha was a prophet. Elisha was a prophet. Elisha was a prophet. A lot of people probably in their spirits were afraid to say that because the nations might hear us. Yeah. You turn that off. That's heavy right there. So with that, as we prepare for the Passover tonight, brothers and sisters, remember that we are the nation of Israel. We are ordained to be above all people on the face of this earth. And we are a family. And we must prefer one another. With that, I'm Officer Yuanathan Kassad. I'm Reed Officer Samuel. Hey, man, appreciate IT for coming out, man. That charity your brothers have, man. Forsaking your own lives to make sure this thing, this thing runs, boy. You almost in that. You almost wasn't able to make it, right? But all praise to the Most High, man. Enjoy the feast. Shalom, family. Most High in Christ bless you, man. Shalom. What is nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you.